So far in our discussion on membrane pumps, we focus on pumps that utilize ATP molecules directly. So we focused on two types of ATPases. We discussed P-type ATPases and we also discussed ABC transporters. So these are both ATPases and what that means is they're membrane pumps that break down ATP molecules directly and use the energy that is stored within the chemical bonds of the ATP molecules to move other molecules and ions against their electrochemical gradient. Now, not all membrane pumps actually utilize ATP molecules directly. And membrane pumps that don't break down ATP directly yet are able to actually move molecules and ions against their electrochemical gradients are known as secondary transporters. So another important category of membrane pumps are the secondary transporters. And as we'll see in just a moment, there are two types. So we see that secondary transporters are these transmembrane pumps that do not actually break down ATP molecules directly. Instead, what they do is they use an established electrochemical gradient of one molecule to move a different molecule against its electrochemical gradient. So we see that they couple non-spontaneous flow of one molecule or ion with the spontaneous flow of a different molecule or ion. So we have two types of secondary transporters. We have antiporters, also known as exchangers, and we have symporters, also known as co-transporters. So let's begin by focusing on antiporters, and let's take a look at this diagram. So we have the membrane. Let's say this is the outside and this, the, and this is the inside of the cell. So we only have two types of molecules that we're going to consider. We have the purple molecules and we have these orange molecules. Now let's say on the outside of the membrane we have a high concentration of these purple molecules and a high concentration of these orange molecules. On the inside we have a low concentration of the purple and a low concentration of these orange molecules. Now, what this antiporter basically does is it allows these purple molecules to naturally move down its electrochemical gradient. So from the high concentration to the low concentration, and this doesn't actually require energy. In fact, it gives off energy. And that free energy that is given off when the purple molecules move down, their electrochemical gradient is captured and is used to basically move these other molecules. So we have these orange molecules against their electrochemical gradient. So we move them from the inside to the outside. So we see that an antiporter use the elect or antiporters use the electrochemical gradient of one molecule to move a second type of molecule in the opposite direction against its electrochemical gradient and we call them antiporters because they move in opposite directions so this one the purple one moves in this direction the orange one moves in the opposite direction now Let's look at symporters. So symporters, also known as co-transporters, are basically the same exact type of transmembrane protein except they move in the same direction. So symporters use the spontaneous flow of one molecule or ion to move a different molecule or ion in the same direction against its electrochemical gradient. And so to visualize that, let's take a look at this diagram. So let's say we have our membrane, this is our symporter, the outside, the inside of the cell. So now what we have, now what we have is a reverse of these orange concentrations. So we have the high concentration of purple outside, a low concentration of purple on the inside, as in this particular case. But now we have a high concentration of these orange ones on the, on the inside and a low concentration of the orange ones on the outside. 
And because of this reversal, we see that the orange arrow will point in the opposite direction as with respect to this case, and that happens to be in the same direction as the purple arrow. So basically what it does is, it allows, so this symporter, also known as a co-transporter, allows the spontaneous movement of these purple molecules down the electrochemical gradient that releases free energy. That free energy is captured by this symporter and it is used to move these orange molecules against the electrochemical gradient from a low to a high concentration from the outside to the inside in the same direction. And so that's why we call them co-transporters, symporters. In this case, they're called antiporters or exchangers because they move in opposite directions. Now, to demonstrate a specific example, let's take a look at a very common type of symporter, so co-transporter, that we find in the membranes of E. coli cells. And by the way, prokaryotic organisms as well as eukaryotic organisms have these secondary transporters. But to demonstrate, we're going to look at a type of secondary transporter that we find in prokaryotic cells, E. coli cells. So this is called lactose permease. So this example we're going to look at is known as lactose permease. So lactose permease is an example of a symporter, a co-transporter, found in E. coli cell membranes. Its structure consists of two six-membrane spanic alpha helices, and these are combined to form this symporter. So let's take a look at the following diagram to basically see the general idea of what it actually does. So we have the E. coli cell membrane. Let's say this is the outside and this is the inside of the cell. So what these E. coli cells basically do is they break down fuel molecules, so they oxidize fuel molecules at the same exact time when they use energy to break down these fuel molecules. They establish an electrochemical gradient of protons, hydrogen ions. And what they establish is a gradient in which we have a high outside concentration and a low inside concentration. And so what happens is we have this symporter shown here in green and it allows the spontaneous movement of these protons from the outside to the inside free energy is released that free energy is taken in and is used to basically transfer sugar molecules in this case lactose molecules and we have a higher concentration of lactose on the inside than on the outside and so we move them against the electrochemical gradient we use that free energy to move it against from the outside to the inside and so this is what the general idea of what lactose permease actually does but what exactly are the specifics what is the action mechanism well let's take a look at the following six diagrams beginning with diagram one so again we have our e coli cell membrane this is our lactose permease it consists of these two halves where each half consists of six membrane spanning alpha helices to form a total of 12 membrane spanning alpha helices so we have one half and the other half now this is the outside, the inside of our cell. So basically what happens is in this particular diagram, we see that we have this space, a cavity in the inside portion of that particular transmembrane pump. And notice in this particular state, it is open to the outside of the cell. So what happens is because it's open to the outside, we have these hydrogen ions, protons, which can enter this cavity. And when one of these enters the cavity, the positive charge basically interacts with the negative charge found on some type of side chain group of an amino acid. So for instance, it can interact with the C double O negatively charged side chain group and it forms a bond. And so now we move on to this particular state. So this is bound and by binding, it basically create some type of change that increases the affinity of this pocket for lactose or some other type of sugar. 
So the lactose, uh, which is a disaccharide, by the way, moves into the pocket. And once it moves into the pocket, as shown here, it basically creates a overall conformational change that inverts the entire structure of that particular mem uh, membrane uh, protein. And so now instead of pointing this way, it inverts. And this inversion, by the way, is also known as an eversion. We basically, instead of opening to this side, we now are open to the other side. So this is the inside, or this is the outside, this is the inside of the cell. And so in this state, we see that now the membrane protein is open to the outside. And so in the next step, the lactose basically detaches, moves into the cell, and by the same exact type of mechanism, then the H basically detaches and moves into the cell. And once both of these two uh, both of these two substances leave the internal cavity of that particular protein, it once again undergoes an eversion in which it inverts and forms back this particular structure. And so once we form back this particular structure, the cycle can, uh, the cycle can basically repeat itself. So we see what happens is in this secondary transporter, basically the free energy that is released when a molecule moves down its electrochemical gradient, in this case the proton, is actually used to drive the movement, the uphill movement of the lactose, in this case, against its electrochemical gradient.